watching WGS TV. Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash WrestleGamer and ZFX TV. I'm the WrestleGamer, Double Big Bully Boudreau, and this is going to be the Impact Wrestling Review for the week of June 5th, 2014. We need to make note of something, guys, before we get started on the review. Yes, we are aware of the the reports of MVP's um, knee injury, but uh, you also have to uh, note that the TNA, they tape a lot of their impacts uh, uh, ahead of time so quite obviously um, last night's impact wrestling was indeed taped before um, MVP suffering that knee injury so it's still really you know uncertain as to what the TNA will do if MVP can I thought I add as well as next week so you won't hear anything on next week's impact video that was also taped yeah I believe same I think it was the day after this one was yeah so again, guys, we don't know. We don't have any any information as to um, what's going to happen. You know, if MVP cannot go forward with the pay per view, but one's going to say, you know, ter you know, terrible timing for Daniel Bryan, and I guess terrible timing for TNA for uh, currently what they their top heel of sorts in uh, MVP to go down with his injury. So that's really undetermined as to what they're going to do at the Slammiversary when uh, if the time comes. But let's go ahead and talk about Impact Wrestling. Uh, from or last night, and joining me on the panel this week for the review. First off, he, he's the Bay Area MVP, known as Will. Will, how you doing? Will, check your microphone. We, we, Will, we can hear you and see you. You gotta unmute your microphone. In the summers, I used to help out on a goat farm. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, uh, we, we do apologize about that. Will's having some uh, technical difficulties with his microphone. We couldn't hear him. Now we should be able to hear him. Will, are you there? Yes. Uh, if I'm finally 10-7 clear, what was Mr. Anderson wearing? Hmm. Who knows? Well, who knows? Well, who knows? We'll get to that point in the review. We'll, we'll let you know what we're talking about. As a man from South Park, simply known as Cartman is here. Cartman, how you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Looked like you were hypnotized for a second. No, I'm just trying to work on uh, Photoshop stuff, too. All right, guys, well, let's take a look at the opening of Impact Wrestling. Apparently, MVP and company were uh, looking backstage for Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe decides to come out and decide, you know what, you don't, you don't want to be a hard man to find. So he decides to call MVP and company, and next thing you know, uh, Austin Ariesen comes out to add in his two cents about MVP, which leads to MVP making a match contract for contract. Um, Samoa Joe taking on Austin Aries later in the evening. So, uh, unique way to start out um, Impact Wrestling this week, wouldn't you say, Will? Well, I can't believe I'm going to say this here on WGS TV, but for one review only, I feel sorry for Dixie Carter. Because... MVP has been on this power trip, and lately the morale hasn't been good. But as far as the segment goes, Joe versus Aries. Who would have thought, right? And, you know, it was very well put. I can only say that it can only stem so far, but uh, this was a good match. But we'll talk about that later as it progresses. I like the segment 2.5. It's okay. Could have been better. Opening match this week on Impact Wrestling featured Bram taking on Willow with Magnus coming out during the match uh, to apparently what we had first thought would be to intercept Bram and take away the weapon, which he did, that Bram had that tire iron type of weapon. And then Magnus turned, turned and snapped and decided to wear Willow out with that tire iron. Uh, Carmen, where do you see this thing going with Bram and Magnus and Willow? Where do you see this going from here? Sorry, I said intro for a quick. Um, seems, like it seems like it's kind of hard to tell where it's going to be going at now because it's kind of just really just really starting off with the Magnus party or Willow part of it. So it's kind of hard to say where it's going to be going now, but I'd say give it... Um, 
chance are they going to have in a match at the uh, pay per view? So, um, I'd say wait until the pay per view to really see where it goes. Backstage MVP runs into the TNA World Tag Team Champions, Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards, the Wolves, who are still not very happy over MVP's recent actions. And MVP said, you know what, you guys look like you're in the mood to fight, so you're going to fight each other. And if you do not fight each other, you, you will be stripped of the TNA World Tag Team Championship. And uh, just to make sure, Kenny King kind of w went out there and was watching it and was trying to, you know, egg him on. You know, instead of doing a traditional classic wrestling match, they were doing, uh, you know, they wanted him to fist fight and kick each other in the face, and that's that in ended up not happening. Uh, Kenny King wasn't very happy with the outcome of the match and said, you know what, you're supposed to fight and kick people in the face. So the Wolves did just that. They launched Kenny King up in the air and they kicked him right in the face, sending him reeling. So, mm, I gotta say, I thought it was a little bit of enjoyable to see Kenny King get kicked in the face. I don't know about y'all, but maybe that's just me. But, uh, we gotta talk about definitely what happened after that. Um, apparently, Robbie E. of the Bromance has a fear. He's not afraid of the of the freak. He's definitely not afraid of Rebel. Who, who would be afraid of her? Um, he's not afraid of Nux. He's afraid of Crazy Steve the Clown. And his beloved. So, yeah, it only made sense to have him come out there and kind of not only freak Robbie E out, but DJ Zima Ion and Crazy Steve got into a horn battle of sorts, which abruptly ended with the freak grabbing DJ Z. Pressing him over his head while Nux dispatched both members of Bromance to the outside. And then the freak just threw DJ Z like he was a sack of potatoes onto onto the Bromance. Um, well, all I, all, all I can ask you is what were your, what were your thoughts when you saw this happen? <laughs> Phobias. Robbie shaking like a bitch. And I don't think this would be... A, I would say a monthly like storyline. I mean, are they trying to pass it off that Robbie E has a fear of clowns, or is this is something that's kind of unsteady in the matter? But um, Crazy Steve, remember, folks, Crazy Steve was a talent that was in Canada. For those who don't know, so other than that, wow, is uh, Nux and the Freak gonna get a sh gonna get a shot at the tag titles if the Bromance can't get it back from the Wolves? Who knows? But I just think this whole segment was so messed up. Charlie Brown would would have fell. So I, I give this one a three, and uh, just I don't like DJ Z Z's hair haircut. He looks like a cockatoo. But the segment was funny overall. <laughs> Did anyone notice the uh, the mispronunciation of Robbie E? You know when he's saying you know the, the menagerie when it's supposed to be the menagerie. I mean, I don't I know. Have no I, idea. Hey, some yeah. stupid jackass from the Jersey Shore. I think that pretty much explains it all that needs to be said. Well, following that, we it was contract for contract, Samoa Joe and Austin Aries and. Eric Young and Bully Ray came out to apparently do what was right, and you know Bully Ray even apologized for punching Brian Hebner in the face, but they said they had to stop the match because it was, you know, their livelihoods. You know, of Samoa Joe and Austin Aries are on the line. Of course, MVP wasn't happy about that, which leads to Bully Ray throwing out a challenge. Um, at first, he said eight-man tag until he got a suggestion from Eric Young, and I don't think I've ever seen this type of a match before, so this was a little bit of a first for me, an eight-man first blood match. Now, Carmen, i got to ask you, your, your, your initial reactions when you heard the announcement of that eight-man first blood match? Damn. Because, like you said, it's something you haven't really seen in pro wrestling before. The uh, tag team first blood match, it was something cool to see. I'll say that much. I think at most I've seen maybe a triple threat first blood match or even a tag team one. I've never seen an eight-man tag one before, so th that definitely presented some uniqueness for the uh, main event. Now, now we heard at the onset of the review, uh, you know, the question of X, what was Mr. Anderson wearing? 
Well, apparently, Mr. Anderson decides to have a little bit of fun at the expense of Cowboy James Storm. He came out to James Storm's uh, long, necks, uh, long necks and rednecks uh, entrance theme, and he was saying about how much he loved beer and sorry for my bad breath as he sprayed it in Christy Hemme's uh, direction, which uh, then brought out Cowboy <laughs> James Storm, who didn't take too kindly to one of the, the trickery at the... Uh, the drinking contest, again, like I said on Facebook, only in TNA, people. Um, and which pretty much led to a fight which ended up with James Storm hitting the last call super kick. And Storm saying, you know what, you want to be a cowboy? June 15th, be sure you bring it him. So one's got to figure, you know, looking at this, well, they they got to have a gimmick match, but what kind of a match are they going to have? What, what do you think? John Wayne versus Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> and and Chuck Norris would win. Nah, and I don't know. I, I, Mr. Anderson looks like a cheap knockoff of Doc Holliday for those who watch bad Kurt Russell movies. But wrestling-wise, I know that the storyline can only get even even funnier. But they're gonna have probably a good match going into what's what's this pay per view upcoming anniversary? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Make sure I was wrong. All right. But other than that, it was pretty good. I, I just didn't think that Anderson didn't take the uh, the last call so well. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry about my bad breath. That's why I'm gonna name it the worst segment. Come back later, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Throughout the night, we saw a series of segments involving Gunner and Samuel Shaw. Apparently, Gunner is determined to assist Samuel Shaw, um, I guess probably because they said he had a military type of background uh, like Shaw, and they were doing some sort of drawing therapy. And uh, Gunner was looking through his book, you know, some of the drawings, and then he, he stared at an incomplete portrait of himself that was done up by Shaw. So I'd I like to know, you know, I'd like to see where they're going to go with this, you know, how further, how much further they're going to push this angle and where they're going to go with Gunner and Shaw, you know, possibly maybe a tag team, or a new tag team of sorts with Gunner and Sam and Shaw. That, that wouldn't be such a, a foreboding idea for TNA to try to do something like that. So, um, I got to say, interesting to see where uh, TNA goes with this mount. Earlier in the evening, Brittany, um, from all we saw last week, you know, Brittany wanted to be with Madison Rain. Uh, I talk, was talking to her, and Madison said, you know what, if you want to help me out, here's what you do. Nothing. You don't do anything. And Will's gone. Yeah, well, uh, we're going to get Will back, so don't worry about that. But um, anyway, um, on to the Knockouts title match. Angelina Love, of course, being company by Velvet Sky, taking on Madison Ring. Now, the, uh, uh, for the duration of the match, during the duration of the match, uh, we had uh, Brittany uh, coming out. And you know, we kind of figured that she was kind of like ignore... Madison Rain and actually do something in the match, but while Angelina Love had the referee distracted, Velvet Sky got up on the ring apron while Brittany was watching her and allowed her to spray the eyes of Madison Rain, which causes Angelina Love to roll her up and uh, get the victory, so Angelina Love retained the title. Uh, backstage, Madison's fuming at wanting to know, you know, why didn't you do anything? You saw her, why didn't you do anything? And Brittany just replied, you asked me to do nothing, so that's what I did. Nothing. Now, Cartman, despite Madison and, well, Brittany channeling her best Mickey James last week, wanting to, quote, be with uh, Madison Rain, uh, where did they go next with this? I could see it becoming a decent feud because that because since Brittany is a, a new talent and since she was a pretty good uh, indie wrestler, I can see TNA wanting to see like how well she does like in the uh, quote unquote spotlight of the knockouts division. Yeah, I definitely can uh, see that coming, and hopefully we'll get uh, the Bay Area MVP known as Will back. Uh, 
before we get to the end of the review here, because right now we're on the main event, the first blood eight-man tag match. MVP Kenny King, Bobby Lashley, and EC3 taking on Eric Young, Bully Ray, Samoa Joe, and Austin Aries. Now, this was indeed, I want to say, you know, for the way it was hyped up, and, uh, you know, I was sitting there and anticipating... Possibly a somewhat more type of a violent match since it was like first blood rules. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say about 90% of the match is like traditional eight man tag until it got to the end. You know, everyone's starting to hit their finisher. You know, and they're going out the ring. It leaves Bully Ray with EC3. Bully Ray wraps his uh, chain around his fist and hits the head of EC3, which draws a minuscule, I mean, tiny amount of blood on EC3's head, and apparently to Earl Hepner, that was enough to declare, uh, uh, call the match off, declare Bully Ray, EC, um, Eric Young, Samojo, and Austin Aries the winners. Um, following up backstage, EC3 was getting mugged by MVP and company when Dixie Carter confronts MVP, uh, orders Lashley to leave him alone, and tells MVP, you want a war? You got one. Can I just bring up one thing? You may. I thought Dixie Carter losing at lockdown would have got her to the hell off of TV. It needs to be that way. Because mm. I know I'm not the only one who's sick of seeing her in front of a camera, or with a microphone, or any sort of thing. Anywhere related to TV. Yes, definitely. I, I gotta agree with you up to that point. But it, it's gonna be it, it, teenage trying to do something. You know, they're trying to do something to make their their angles interesting again. You know, and with the the continuation of Dixie Carter versus MVP, now with both characters heel. You know, can TNA pull it off? I don't know. But but it's something we'll we'll have to see in the near future. As um, unfortunately, guys, for this week's review, we had no Facebook uh, fan reviews. But whenever we get any reviews sent in to Facebook.com/slash/wgstv, we uh, will definitely uh, well we read it out loud. Um, I got a message here from the Bay Area MVP note as well. His internet has cut out, so he can't join it. But he, he's going to go ahead and. We're going to go into overall scores and our picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling this week. Um, we're going to go to Will first. Uh, what Will says is overall score is 3.5 out of 5. The best match was indeed the, the main event, the eight-man first the eight man tag first blood match, excuse me. The worst match was the match with the Wolves, is what he's saying, and the worst segment was Mr. Anderson impersonating Cowboy James Storm. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Impact Wrestling is kind of like, like right here in the middle. You know, they're they're not doing terribly bad, but they're not fantastic either. Uh, I, I gotta say, I'm gonna go about half a point lower than Will. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. It was just kind of an average show. Um, some of it did catch my interest. I was a little disappointed with the way the first blood match went. You know, I was expecting possibly a more violent type of a feel to it, you know, with it being a first blood match, you know, from what we've seen in the past, you know, uh, a variety of weapons being used. Um, the only real weapon that was used was Bully Ray's chain wrapped around his fist, which, again, drew a minuscule, a tiny amount of blood, and which caused uh, EC3 and company to lose the match. Uh, I remember seeing back in the, the day with WWE with their first blood matches, you'd have to have a face caked with blood before the referee would actually declare the match over. So I was a little disappointed with the way that turned out. I, I got to go best match of the night. I'm, I'm still going to go with the eight-man tag for the best match of the, best match of the night. Um... Uh, I got a worse, worse segment. Uh, I, I, I'm a, I gotta, I gotta agree with Will just a little bit about Anderson, and and Cowboy James Storm. I'm not saying that it was terrible, because it it did have some comedic and entertaining value to it, but 
you know, in, in my case, like I even said it last week, anything that has to do with Dixie Carter is automatically worst segment of the night. Ding, ding, so, ding. So with, even with Dixie Carter confronting MVP, uh, she was just like, oh. <laughs> And your dog, and your dog agrees with it. Uh, yes. <laughs> Second. Well, uh, while Cartman attends to his dog, you know, uh, like, uh, one thing that really still is interesting, guys, is again where they're going to be going next with with Gunner and Samuel Shaw. What exactly are they going to do with this? Um, which is possibly going to be a, a common question. I would like you guys to uh, talk about. You know, where do you guys see this thing going with? Gunner and Cowboy James Storm. It's really interesting. So I want to want to hear what you guys have to say about that. And another person I want to hear from right now is indeed the man from Southburn, simply known as Cartman, with his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling this week. Cartman, overall score, I have to say a three. Um, best match, I have to say first blood match. Um, Although I had to agree, I thought it would be more violent, especially with uh, the table hit list, seeming every seeming as everyone on the other team was on it. <laughs> yep, pretty much. But it, it just didn't. I expected somebody to go through a table. Yeah, but like I said, I was I was hoping for maybe a possibly more violent type of a match with it being a first blood match, and we just really didn't see that. It was like I said before, it was just basically ninety percent traditional eight man tag until they got to the ending with everyone hitting their finishers. And then it left Bully Ray alone with EC3 uh, with a fist wrapped around. And again, tiny amount of blood, you know, compared to what we've seen in the past with the WWE. Really, just a little bit. We'll never see a first blood match in WWE again. Yeah, but uh, your puppy seems to be really interested. Uh, Cartman's got his, uh, got his puppy dog right there. So while Cartman is showing off his dog, what we want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Impact Wrestling this week. What are your overall scores? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Impact Wrestling? Where do you see this thing going with Gunner and Samuel Shaw? Where do you see this thing going now with Dixie Carter and MVP after what we saw at the end of Impact Wrestling uh, last week? What does she mean by going to war with MVP again again so we definitely want to hear what you guys have to say about this be sure you put your comments in the comment section below don't forget to like and favorite this video guys don't forget to check out the Bay Area MVP known as well over on iVlog on the hood so you guys can find the links to him and all the uh, um, everyone here on WGS TV right here in the description box below um, speaking of that Carmen is on YouTube at youtube.com so killer X Kenny Carmen you got anything coming up uh, not that I know at the moment I just Whenever I think of something, I just kind of upload it. If I decide it's good enough to upload. Uh, does your puppy have anything coming up? I'm going to take this as a look as a no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fans, don't forget to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash WGSTV, and don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash ZFXTV Network if you haven't already. So for the Bay Area MVP known as Will and the man from South Park, simply known as Cartman and his puppy, I am the Russell Gamer. Double people in Boudreaux saying thank you very much for barking. I mean, watching.